If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Our first step would be to draw a free body diagram that shows the forces acting on the luge and its rider. And we can represent those objects as this single dot. We have the downward gravitational force, which we can label as mg. We have the surface of the snow pushing up on the luge and the rider, and that'll be the normal force. And then we have this force that's going to cause them to slow down and eventually come to rest. And the question notes that that force is capital F. Now, the normal force and the gravitational force are equal in magnitude, so they essentially cancel each other out. That leaves the net force acting on the luge and rider to be just F. And so once we know that that's the net force, we can turn to Newton's second law, which of course tells us that the net force is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. And so, as noted, the net force will be that force F. And the mass was given in the question to be 85 kilograms, so we can plug that in. And we'll notice that since the net force points to the left, that means the acceleration will have to be negative, if we assume that this direction is the negative direction and over here is the positive direction. So we can plug in negative 2 meters per second squared in for the acceleration, and then when we compute that, we get about negative 1.7 times 10 to the power of 2 newtons. So that represents the net force, and since the question only wants the magnitude, we can actually take the absolute value of that net force, and that would turn out to be positive 1.7 times 10 to the power of 2 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, one way of solving it would be to use one of the equations from kinematics. We know that the final velocity of the object is 0 meters per second. As noted, the acceleration is negative 2 meters per second squared. The initial velocity will be 37 meters per second. And then we're looking for the distance that is traveled, so in essence we're looking for delta x. And the equation from kinematics that relates these four variables is the following. And we can solve this equation for delta x by subtracting the v initial squared over. And then we can divide both sides by 2 times the acceleration so that it cancels out on the right hand side. And we could then go ahead and plug in the known values that we listed earlier. So we'll have 0 for the final velocity, the initial was 37, and then we'll plug in the acceleration which indeed was negative. And when we work that out, we should get 3.4 times 10 to the power of 2, and that will be in meters since we calculated a displacement. So this is the correct answer to part B. And now on to part C, which asks us for the work that is done by the net force that was marked F. We know that the work done by that force would be the magnitude of F multiplied by the distance that the object travels, multiplied by the cosine of an angle. And let's talk about that angle for just a moment. That angle must be between the displacement vector and the force whose work you're trying to calculate. In this case, that force is just that capital F. Now, if we look at the diagram, we recall that capital F was pointing to the left. We had assumed that this object was actually moving to the right. So if we want, we can label a displacement vector pointing to the right. And then you want to ask yourself, what is the angle between that displacement vector, which points to the right, and that force F, which points to the left? And of course, the angle between those two vectors would be 180 degrees. So when we plug into the work equation, we have to make sure our angle is 180 degrees. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll plug in the magnitude of the force, which was the 1.7 times 10 squared newtons, times the distance that we calculated, 3.4 times 10 squared, and then multiplied by the cosine of that 180 degree angle. Now, the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. So in essence, we're going to have a negative answer, and we just have to multiply these two quantities in parentheses. And when we do that, we get about 5.8 times 10 to the power of 4, and then the unit of work is joules. So this would be the correct answer to part C. Now, for the remaining three parts, we're going to have the same setups that we just discussed for the force, the distance, and then the work. So we'll set those three calculations up in the, in the same way that we did for the first three calculations. So here are the setups. We can go ahead and plug in all the known values. Just note that for this part of the question, 
the acceleration is now 4 meters per second squared in magnitude, so that means it's going to have a value of negative 4 meters per second squared. Once again, it's a negative acceleration because the net force is pointing to the left, and therefore the acceleration also points to the left. And of course, even though the acceleration technically is negative, because of the question asking for the magnitude of the force, we're going to actually put the acceleration in absolute value terms. So it's actually going to be positive when we perform the calculation. So we've entered in the numbers. This turns out to be that net force. And then when we calculated the displacement, we plugged in the correct acceleration of negative 4. And we obtained this value. And then for the work, when we work that out, remember the cosine of the angle was negative 1 we once again get negative 5.8 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. So this is the correct answer to part F of the question.